Hey, I'm Courtney Waterman, your tutor. Lover of anime, manga, and math. And you just tuned into another session of Tutor Me Senpai. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're jumping into a fourth grade topic, types of angles. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'll be putting time codes in for this video in the description box below. So use that to skip ahead to whatever part of the video you think is most interesting. As always, if you have any questions about what we see today or even your own homework, you can always visit me on my Facebook page at Tumi Senpai and tell me all about it there. This video is going to have six parts, so leave a like, smash the subscribe button, and let's get started. So today we're going to be talking about six different types of angles. But before we jump into those, let's first ask ourselves the question, what is an angle? Now, an angle, in a very simple way, is just going to be the space between two objects that are touching at the same point. Two objects, any straight objects that are touching at the same point. Point. You can make an angle with your hands. Notice they're touching here at the same point. Two objects. You can have, let's say, an eraser and a marker touching at the same point. Two objects. The space between them will be your angle. So even shapes, let's say squares, triangles, rectangles, those sides are going to cause angles to form in between your shape. So if you have something like this, there's angles at every corner. The space between two straight objects attached at the same point. See, That's what you are going to call an angle. Those are our angles. So today we're going to form our angles using two rays. Now on this channel we've talked about lines, line segments, and rays. And if you recall, a ray is going to start at a point go out a certain distance and have an arrow there. This is a ray and we're going to have two of them, right? So we're going to form an angle with two rays. Now the first angle that we're going to form is going to be called an acute angle, acute angles. And they all look something like this. Notice that there's space in between and how we denote that space is we draw some kind of curved line. This is our angle. And this whole thing is going to be an acute angle. Now what makes this an acute angle? Well acute is going to mean small in this case. It's going to be small. But how small is small? Well it's going to be less than 90 degrees. Degrees is what we use to measure our angles. And we'll get into how to measure angles in another video, but know that every angle that we're going to be talking about has some amount of degrees. So this could be, let's say, 30 degrees. That could be 30 degrees. It could be 45 degrees. It could be 55 degrees. It doesn't really matter. As long as it's less than 90 degrees, it's an acute angle. And acute angles look a lot of different ways. You can have something as thin as that. You can have something as wide as this. These are all acute angles. The space in between, these are all angles. But these are all acute angles because they are all less than 90 degrees. And you can think of acute, what helps me remember it is, I like to think of the fact that it has the word cute in it. And typically, small things are rather cute. You know, you have small animals tend to be pretty cute. Small phones are a lot cuter than your large phones. Like, small things tend to be a little cuter. And because this is an acute angle, it's going to be a small angle. So the big thing for acute angles is, once again, they have to be strictly less than. They can't equal strictly less than 90 degrees. It doesn't matter how big or small you are in between that range. You can be one degree, you can be 89 degrees, but you have to be strictly less than 90 degrees. So let's move on to our next angle, our right angle. Now, once again, our right angle is going to be made by two rays again. Here we have our first ray and our right angle will look 
pretty much like this. Notice, once again, they're attached at the same point, so we're going to have an angle. However, how you draw your angle is not gonna be like that. So our acute, we draw our angles with that little curve line there. However, for right angles, they're gonna go straight up like this. So they're gonna be straight up like this, and it's going to have a box instead. The box is a very symbolic form of a right angle. If you have two lines, or sorry, two rays like this, and you have a box, that's telling you that this is a right angle. And what does that mean as far as degrees goes? Well, this is exactly 90 degrees. So you see your acute angle is gonna be everything here, except it doesn't hit that 90 degrees. Anything in this way can be an acute angle, but the moment you are straight up and down like this, equally exactly 90 degrees, you have gone from an acute angle to a right angle. Now all your right angles are gonna look just like this. You can't have anything else because that's no longer a right angle. However, however, you can also have your angles written a different type of way. You don't have to have your angle written straight across like this to begin with. You can have an angle like this. You see your starting line here and here. Now if I drew that absolutely perfectly, you could have this as a right angle. Notice if you were to rotate this, it would be straight up and down. So it's really depending on where your ray is. It goes perpendicular to your ray. Now we talked about perpendicular lines on this channel as well. Your right angle is going to be formed when you have two perpendicular rays. That's going to create a right angle. So you have your acute angle, which is everything less than 90. You have your right angle, which is gonna be everything that's exactly 90. No matter how you rotate this, it's exactly 90. What happens if you have something that's a little bit bigger than 90 degrees? Let's jump into our next angle, our obtuse angle. Here we have an obtuse angle. Well, not quite. Let's draw it. Now your obtuse angle can't be less than 90. It can't be exactly 90 because those are gonna be two different types of angles that are different from your obtuse. So it's going to have to be bigger than 90 degrees, but how big? That's a good question. So everything that looks something like this will be an obtuse angle. And notice, we're back to drawing our curve in between to denote our angle. This is our angle. And because it's bigger than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees, it's an obtuse angle. So this is gonna have a range. So before you had your acute that was gonna be anything between zero and 90. Then you have something that's exactly 90, which is your right angle. Now you're gonna have something between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. That's what's gonna be this angle. If it's between 90 and 180, it can't equal them. You can't have it equal 90, and you can't have it equal 180 degrees. It has to be something in between. So it can be 91 all the way up to 179 degrees. These are going to be perfectly fine. You just can't equal 90, nor can you equal 180. And they're all gonna look very similar to this right here. Now, just like your acute angles, you can have different forms. So because your, your angle is going to range, you can have something that's just barely past 90. You can have something that's, making sure you put your point here, really past 90, right? You can have your obtuse angle alter between something very close to that right angle and very close to our next angle. Because just like your acute angle couldn't hit that 90 degrees because that was a different type of angle, your obtuse can't hit that 180 degrees because that's gonna be a different type of angle. And we're gonna call that angle our straight angle. So let's jump straight into that one. So when you have a straight angle, you're going to once again start with your ray, yet this time we're gonna go straight to the opposite side. Straight to the opposite side. This should be a straight line. The name should kind of give it away. Your straight angle. And this is going to be what we call 
180 degrees. So we've talked about your acute angles. Those are going to be your small angles that are going to be less than 90. We talked about your right angles. Your right angles are going to equal exactly 90, right? 90 degrees. We've talked about your obtuse angles, right? That are going to be greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. And we talked about our straight angle. These are going to be your four more common angles, but we do have two more to talk about. Now, this is probably not all that exciting because any line, remember lines are going to be arrows on both sides, is going to have 180 degrees between them, especially if you put a point anywhere on them, 180 degrees between them. So it's probably not going to be as exciting as these other ones here, but this is still a rather important angle to know, your straight angle. And remember your acutes, they're small, they're cute, you're right. Well, if you think about it, look at your hand. If you ever want to say, oh, you're right, good job, or anything like that where you're putting your thumb up, you're kind of making that right angle there. It's a little bit like a, a good job, a thumbs up, you got that right. So you can kind of remember that there. A tooth is gonna be something that's not acute or right angle, and your straight is, just like the name says, a straight angle. Let's jump into two more that are not gonna be as common, but you should still know them. So we had something going from here all the way to our straight 180 degrees. But are we gonna stop there? Can we go even further? Can we go beyond 180 degrees? Well, yes, you can go beyond 180 degrees. In fact, you can go all the way around and everything that's past 180 degrees, but not going back to the beginning, because we don't want to go all the way back to the beginning where we started, everything in between 180 and the beginning is going to be what we call a reflex angle. So they're going to look something like that. But instead of putting your angle here, that's not where we want to put it. We don't want to put our angle here. We always want to start the same place on this side and go all the way around. It's getting bigger and bigger as we're getting further from this. This is a reflex angle. And you have a lot of different forms of that because it's going to be greater than 180 degrees, but strictly less than 360 degrees. So you can go rather far. They can be something like this where your line is all the way over here, and then you just kind of went all the way here. You can have something like this, in which your line is just barely past 180. These are all reflex angles. As long as they're greater than 180 degrees, greater than your straight line, but not going all the way back to the beginning, that's what you're gonna call a reflex angle. So this is gonna be our fifth angle for today. We have one last angle to talk about, and that's going to be what happens when you go all the way around and we stop where we begin. We're gonna call that one our complete angle. So let's jump straight into that. So let's say we have our ray here, and we're going to go all the way around. We're going past our acutes, we're passing our 90, we're passing our obtuses, we're passing the straight, and we're passing all the reflex to go all the way back around. So I'm gonna just draw this line over again. So it signifies that we're landing right on top. Well, from here all the way around is what we call a complete angle. And we say that because you completed the circle. You've gone all the way around a full 360 degrees all the way around and you completed the circle giving you a complete angle now we've hit from our starting point back to our starting point and there's different types of angles you have your acutes your rights obtuses your straights and all the reflex until you get back to your complete angle so I hope you were able to follow along with today's video, and I hope you now understand that whether you have a small little cute angle or a right angle, got that right, or you have a big obtuse angle or straight straight angle, or even a reflex angle, or even if you went all the way around and completed your circle for a complete angle, you now know how to identify your six different types of angles. However, if you have any questions about what we saw today, or even on homework. You can always visit me on my Facebook page at Tanumi Senpai and tell me all about it there. 
If you hadn't done so already, remember to leave that like. It surely helps the channel by letting YouTube know that you found the video helpful. And if you found the video helpful, so can someone else. So leave a like, hit the notification bell, smash the subscribe button, and share this video with a friend. Well, that's all the time I have for today. I really hope this helped with your homework. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week. I'm Courtney, and this has been another session of Tutor Me Senpai.